Welcome back. This video covers chapter two, section three of the textbook Think Python. You can get more information from the description below. Variables can be arbitrarily long, so we can have as many characters in a variable as we'd like, but they should be concise and readable. And usually this is a balancing act between trying to keep your variables as short as possible, but also be able to easily interpret what that variable represents. Variables are also case sensitive, so the variable hello, all lowercase, is not the same thing as the initially capitalized hello. So you can legally use both of these as variables in your namespace without causing an error. And so that does mean it is legal to start a variable with a capital letter, but usually, according to convention, it's better to use lowercase variables. Variable names can contain letters, numbers, and underscores, but it must begin with a letter or an underscore. If you try to begin a variable with a number, it's going to raise a syntax error. Same with trying to use a Python keyword. So we're going to jump over to the Colab notebook and talk a little more about keywords and variable names. I'm going to start by just copying a portion of this comment here and search that in the textbook so I can find the code that I need to copy. I'm going to copy and paste this and then clean it up. I'll run this and we're going to get a syntax error and in fact for each of these as we work through each of these syntax errors we're going to get the same syntax error so we're going to fix each of these so if I need to represent the idea of 76 trombones I might decide to put this at the end or maybe even put an underscore uh, it kind of just depends on your own personal aesthetics but either way we can run this and get to the next error so now we're looking at a slightly different place where the cursor was pointing. It was pointing, it identified tr 76 trombones correctly before, but now it's looking at the assignment operator as the source of the problem. Um, so again, just to give you an idea that this isn't always reliable, but it is going to give you enough information to find the problem. So uh, if you need to represent this at symbol, uh, the way I would do this is just do underscore at. So we'll run this and we'll deal with our final error. So again, syntax error, and again, it incorrectly identifies the assignment operator as the problem. So we're going to do class one just to make that a legal variable. And now we need to evaluate all these. You can see that we've we've evaluated each of these statements, but these are all assignment operators. So that's not going to return anything visible to the terminal. So now we want to evaluate each of these. There we go. All right. So now when we evaluate something, we, uh, we notice that it only evaluates class one here. And the reason why is because this is the last interpretable line. So it's evaluating these. It's, it's correct to say that it's evaluating everything, but it's just making visible the evaluation of this last variable here. So class one refers to this string here. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a glimpse into something we're going to work on in later chapters, which is comments, and show you how to use these as a diagnostic tool for um, being able to kind of troubleshoot things. Um, it's used very simply here, um, but you can, you can use it as like a selector for what code you want to run and what code you don't want to run. So I'm going to run this now, and of course, it will evaluate this first line here, trombone 76, and that evaluates to the string big parade. And I'll take back this other comment here. And it's now evaluating both of these, but again, it's only going to make visible the last interpretable line when you're just evaluating a variable. So this variable here is going to represent this integer 1 million. And then we'll take back this last comment. And you can see that we have what we started with, which was the string. So I'm going to add a code block. And now we're going to talk about keywords. So I'll scroll down a little bit. And I'm going to copy and paste all of this. But I've got some things to come back and read. So I'm going to paste this in first. And then I'm going to go back. So it says Python 2 has 31 keywords. So these are they. And then in Python 3, exec. So exec is right here. Is no longer a keyword, but non-local is. So I'm going to just add non-local here. And it can be a little hard to know what any of this means. You, we see we have all this different syntax highlighting. For example, these yellow are 
functions and these light blue are uh, logical operators. Um, so we're going to run, actually, we, we're going to run this and we're going to get an error. Uh, so get rid of that error. Then I'm going to add a code block. And I'm going to show you something that you can use to get more information about these. So you don't have to go hunt down the documentation every time. So this is the help function. And we know it's a function because the syntax highlighting turns yellow. It's got parentheses that we're going to pass an argument to. In this case, uh, we're just going to pass print. And you can see that we get a structure of the arguments. So uh, print can take a value and it can take any number of values just like we saw before when we wanted to print with multiple arguments. It has a separator which is defaulted to a space so that's why we get that space inside of the print function. And then um, we have an end here so the default end is a new line. Um, but we can change these to whatever we want and uh, so you can see all of the fun uh, all the parameters in the function. And then it also gives you some more information about what exactly it does. So if you're curious about any of these things, if it's a function, you don't want to pass it as a string. If we try to pass this, actually, I don't know what happens if we pass this as a string. Ah, it still gives it to us. That's cool. Um, so, But if you try to do else, you're going to get an inv invalid syntax error. Um, and so what we need to do, if it's not a function, we need to turn it into a string. We need to turn this into a string. And when we do that, we get an, we, it evaluates to the if statement. So we get the same thing here as if we were to pass if and also elif. And that's because these are all essentially related. Um, and so what we have here is we have, um, we have the if statement. Um, this looks a little technical, but it's just a specific notation to say that this is comprised of these components. And so these components are the kind of literal reference, the keyword if, and then whatever expression you want to evaluate and determine whether it's true or false, and then a colon. So the quotes around this are literally a colon. And then the suite is the block of code that's going to be run. And then you have elif and else. Um, and these are just additional ways that you can um, you know, control the flow of information as you're evaluating a conditional. Um, so that's why they're all related in the single the single evaluation of this little art article here. Um, let's take something else. So let's take uh, let's take not and evaluate that as a string. And you see that we just get the general article for Boolean operations. So help is a very useful thing if you're trying to understand a little more about Python and you want to pick it apart, but you don't want to go dig through the documentation. And this actually refers to the documentation. Uh, so it's a very, very useful tool. I'm also going to show you the directory. So the dir function. There's going to be a lot of stuff in here that um, you don't really need to know about. Um, it doesn't really help you much. Um, but what, uh, what does help is that you can keep track of what has been added to the namespace. Um, these are some variables I, I added before in prior takes of, uh, of this. Um, then we have an exit and get Python, which again are a part of the default namespace. Um, so this is a great way to check if you've added a variable or if you have something in your namespace. If you have something in your namespace that you don't want, maybe you have a variable that you're, you tried to use but you don't want to use it anymore, you can do del and that variable. And now if we scroll up here and run this, we see that we no longer have trombones underscore 76. And if we look up here, we can see that del is a part of our is a part of our keyword up here, keywords up here. Um, so you can read more about that if you'd like. And just a quick note on this textbook. So we see that it says exec is no longer a keyword, but non-local is. This Python notebook is a part of. Uh, it is using Python three. So let's let's evaluate exec for help. And it says exec, it takes a source code, and then some globals, which is the default none, and then some locals, which is the default none, and then this uh, s this forward slash. Um, so we can see that it is still clearly a part of Python 3. Um, so let's say we do exec um, print hello, oops, hello world. Um, and so this is what the exec function does. So we can see that it does still work in Python 3. I actually don't know how to see what environment I'm in. I know it's in here somewhere, but I'm not going to bother looking for it since I know that uh, this is using Python 3. And then uh, let's let's take a look at non-local. And again, we're going to get an error here. 
because we have to put this in strings. So non-local statement. Um, let's see here. Non-local statement causes the listed identifiers to refer to previously bound variables in the nearest enclosing scope, excluding globals. I'm going to have to do some research on this. This is uh, out in the limits of my Python knowledge. I've never had to use non-local, uh, but that's what I love about Python. It's very rich for exploration, you know, and, and once you kind of learn how to explore things, that's really when you're able to just pick up whatever, whatever tools exist, um, and it's going to make you a much better programmer. So I encourage you to do that as well. Thanks again for joining. The next video will cover chapter two, section four on the topic of operators and operands.